Welcome to another episode of the Funniest Person Podcast, presented by Acme, uh, where we're talking to some comics about uh, a little amateur contest uh, that happens every year. It's been going on for 30 years, and it happens to produce some of the funniest people in the entire world. Uh, and uh, here with us uh, is a good buddy of mine and a one-time contestant, Acme regular, Tommy Ryman, everybody. Hello, Brian. Thanks for having me. I like to do the reveal even though the video is just directly on you. Yeah, they know. <laughs> I was just sitting there looking at you awkwardly. So, <laughs> but, but I was gazing into the eyes of the camera. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming down. Um, so you, um, so this is interesting for me because I was not around when you did the contest. When I started, you were an MC. So I think I think I st- I started in '08 was when I started coming around to shows. Where you did the contest? What in, was it? '06? 2005. Five was your contest. Was year. When I was in the Acme's Funniest Person in the Twin Cities contest, and you only did it once, right? I did it that one time. I only did it once too. Yeah, that's I think all. I think the real ballers do it once, and then we uh we ascend. Yeah, or or we hang out and do open mics for two more years, and then we get paid to do exactly. Comedy, you know. You Either know way. me though. How do you think I did? <laughs> Just no, guessing. So no, that's the thing, right? So I would have, I would have assumed that you were a finalist. Um, that you, but meaning I, in the top five? Yeah, of the kind. Well, that contest would have been fantastic. But, but I would, I would have been incorrect. Yeah, so I would have thought. Well, obviously, yeah. you were semifinalists. Also, wrong. I would have been incorrect. Yeah, you were. You you didn't make it past the first round. I'm very curious to find out why that is. But so first off, had you done much or any stand-up before you did the contest? So I started coming to Acme January 3rd of 2005. So was it a classic uh, New Year's resolution situation? No, it wasn't. Mm. It was just a random. Mm. I had uh, had been listening to a bunch of Mitch, Hed- Mitch Hedberg, got into stand-up. My sister was coming to the mic here, so I just randomly well, figured it out. your sister did the out. open mic? No, she watched. Well, she, she, just, she was just watched. like, she just was a regular. Yeah, so she was audience. like, you should do it, because I was kind of. And you'd always like stand-up before that, I assume? Yeah, like, I mean, I got really into Mitch Hedberg and a bunch of the Swartz and Dane Cook, like that whole Comedy Central sure. class of those half-hour were you, specials. And were you aware that Swartzen was a local guy? No, I, I learned that. I didn't know anything about comedy. I didn't understand that you could, like work your way up and work at the club. Mm-hmm. Like I thought you had to have a new three minutes every time you came. Like I was very well, naive about the whole how comedy worked, which may have helped me or may have not. Brandy but... said the same thing. I think I think a little naivete goes a long way in yeah. the beginning. <laughs> so but after I so I started in January and then was kind of getting regular threes every couple weeks at the mic and then I found out about the contest and I was like, well you better believe I'm signing up yeah. for that. And uh there was another I think it, that was Amber Preston and I were kind of the same class, so I okay. think she was in it that year, and then Brooks Robinson. Oh, that was the Brooks year? Yeah. Whoa, so, whoa. I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal who well, won it the <laughs> year already, or how if we build to that, uh, but well, yeah. yeah. We'll build to it, but obviously the Brooks' year was, uh, <laughs> the fact that we call it the Brooks year is pretty notable. <laughs> yeah. it's. I mean, probably, honestly, the most notable year of the contest, I would argue, in terms of just somebody coming out of like, like who the hell's that guy? Right, just an <laughs> unknown. Because he had not been coming to the mic. No. I mean, he kind of just started his at that contest. He's which, a handsome space alien. That's, what, that's how I like to think of yeah. him. He's, but I had been coming down, so I yeah. got cocky. I thought I was going to do, uh, do, do well. But, and I did win my night. Oh, really? So, okay, so you won your night. So what probably happened to you, I mean, chances are, you know, is the thing when you have a, 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 such a broad number of judges, and sometimes especially if you're on a weaker night, like you might win the night, but because everybody else is weak, you know, they'll like, well, he was he was better than everybody else, and they were like sixes, so I'll give him a seven. Well, I always tell people you're almost better to do well on a night with a couple other good comics, because then they go, well, they were all pretty good. I guess I got to give one guy tens. I'll give this girl nine point five, or you know. No, I know who ruined it for me. I oh, know, you do? Yeah, I know who the I know the who the headliner was. I know how he judges. I know his character. <laughs> And I know, I know he ruined my. I don't know if I should even name I the have name. To know. I know he's who I always blame. I love him. His, his name was Andy Kindler. Andy uh, Kindler. And I oh, think, this is wonderful. I think he took his job too seriously, <laughs> and I think he did give me low. And because I was going, I literally went against what I remember is two of the other comics in that room. Both had guitars. Oh. One person did not play guitar. So I was. I mean, walking in, I was like, well, I. I have this, right? Like, it's already done. <laughs> Would you say, so they brought the guitar on stage but didn't use it? Yeah, well, he just probably, he's like, oh, I thought this would be funny to have. And then, and then he's like, I don't even play guitar. And I was like, I'm going to 
I'm gonna, I'm just cash that thousand dollars now. <laughs> you were already buying Legos yeah, in your brain. Yeah, I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> Andy Kindler's nice. I love his humor. He's probably gonna love me too. And, <laughs> And he does love friends. you. That's the funny I part. I know. I know. Have I you ever confronted Andy about I've this? I've never confronted him. Well, Tommy, but... behind the curtain, we have Andy. No, that would be uh, that would be a, a big budget thing yeah. for us to fly Andy Kindler in here just as just to Jerry Springer you on this podcast. Uh, but cut to a few years later, one of my another one of the times I auditioned for Last Comic Standing, uh, it wasn't at Acme. I, I flew out to New York. Louis got me at that audition. Mm. And Andy Kindler was the judge. It was Geraldo and oh, yeah. Natasha. And I had I was early in the morning and and it's such an awkward, it's like empty Gotham Club, but they did I did my audition for that. And Natasha goes, No. And then uh and Greg he was like, ah, you know, we're good. And they had already passed like two people right in front of me that I was waiting for. Ooh. And then Andy goes, well, like, yeah, I can't do anything. I was like, really, Andy, you're not even going to help me in this, <laughs> this contest. You're you ruined zeroed me out and me all those years. Si- yeah, so ah. I hope he doesn't find out. I feel I love Andy. And I really of course, have, he's, I he's think the, he's, he's the <laughs> nicest guy. He's wonderful. <laughs> no, he you know what? You, but you're right, though. He probably, honestly, he probably did take it more seriously. And I, and I do think that, I really do think there's a disadvantage to being on a night uh, with a lot of scrubs because there's a, there's always a relative tendency for everything and so you're like well like well I gave those guys fives like this guy's pretty good I gave him sevens but that don't help you none in the yeah getting into the finals or interesting so were you pretty uh were you pretty uh how did you take the news of not making the uh oh I I mean I think I w- I thought I was pretty convinced I was get in and then I didn't and then I just moved on with my life sure. like I was still. Get in regular time, and I got an extra, extra large Rolling Rock shirt the night I won. <laughs> an extra, and extra I got to, large. Yeah, and I, I got the excitement of winning. And so you like, got a robe. <laughs> yeah, but and the the club saw me. I'll stand, you know. Yeah. So I did my thing. I made my, you know. I just didn't get to uh, two more rounds. And who knows what could have happened? What if I did terrible in those and it made me look worse? Then they're like, "Well, we can't even put them on again." Yeah, <laughs> on get rid of this, this guy. guy is done. That's that's really interesting, and I think that is a good. I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about because I do think a lot of people, and especially I think this was more of a thing like in our like when your era and then the beginning of my era, there was kind of a thought at one point that it was like, if you win the contest, you're going to get hired because a lot of people around that time, the winners did get hired. But I mean, I've talked to Lewis about it since, and it was like, well, it happened to be that the people who turned out to be really good later happened to win the contest. But it wasn't like a direct correlation of any kind. Yeah, there's no yeah. rhyme reason. And I don't even know if that point at the contest I knew how you got. I, I must have known that you can get hired at some point, but I didn't know the process of. Who were you hanging out with at that point? Like, my mentor at that time was a guy named Chuck Bartell. We all just know. saw him last night. Yeah. And he I would so I would go on Mondays and then I would leave or go go to the bar after the, after the set. They'd hang out. And then I always ask Chuck, like, what should I? What am I doing? How am I? And he would just go, just keep writing. And that's all he would tell me. And that's all right. I did. Yeah. I was like, great, great advice. But that's did what Chuck I do tell the contest? everybody. Did he win? I don't know Chuck's history of the contest. I'm assuming he probably won. I got, yeah, he, I've got to talk to Chuck about it. But I'm sure it's all been scrapped from the internet and, and hidden. For, <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Um, interesting. So, yeah, so you were, and because I think you maybe were more like me, like, because I joined, I came in 2008, right? I remember the, one of the first nights I had at Grumpy's was when Andy had lost and then came in and was really drunk and just like roasted everyone at oh, Grumpy's because re- she was so mad. And I remember being like both like, oh my God, this is so funny because I'd seen her before and I thought it was so funny. But also I was like, dang, I missed the contest. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I just narrowly missed it. So I, I, I prepped for it all year and it was a really big deal for me. But at the same time, like I wasn't going to like stop doing stand up if I didn't make the semis or I wasn't going to like stop coming to Acme. Like I was in at that yeah. point. I was working. I was, I was trying to get to get work regardless, but uh, that would have stung. That would have stung a little bit. Yeah, cause, and then I didn't get hired until the following spring, spring of 2006. So That's that was that summer far. of 2005. I, I didn't get hired for over a year after I did that. Yeah, so, but, but yeah, I, and I came, it was Brooks that came out of nowhere yeah. from that, that contest, but then he started regularly coming, and he was fantastic, and then I think it was Amber, me, and Brooks that kind of got hired all within that same... Yeah, and you guys yeah. all worked there. You guys were all the new MCs. I think maybe Eric was the newest MC when I first started coming here. Yeah, I think and Eric kind of did came. it the year after, I think. Yep. Did he yep. win the contest? So I think you guys had been working here for a little bit longer, and he had just gotten hired. But Brooks will say, well, for, Brooks is the only, as far as I know, he's got to be the only person 
who his very first set in the history of <laughs> him doing comedy was this prelim round. His, he didn't even do the practice rounds, I don't think. Did didn't he? Didn't show up. He on didn't show up for they... the because you could show up on the on the mic and get a, like a little practice spot before your time. He just did his first set was the second set was the semis. His la- third set was the finals, and he won, which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But he's he was a talented, he's charismatic, really, yeah. handsome yeah. young man. Very distinctive. Agree, you know, and I think that's one thing that people um, and also content- was not judged by Andy Kindler. Just want to say that his prelim, <laughs> there was no Andy Kindler. Who knows? Probably Jackie Cage, some phenomenal, wonderful, <laughs> nice. Warm hearted Lori Kilmartin yeah. was boosting his scores. Someone giving easy tens, <laughs> flying out of the back. <laughs> I do think in contest too. You know, Brooks is a really distinctive. You know, or like Andy has such a distinctive on stage character. Where I was like. A guy like me who's just like, I have some interesting thoughts. You know, I'm a regular guy with interesting thoughts. It's harder to stand out when you go up against somebody, you know, with like, with Andy, you just see this huge personality and you're just like, well, I'm kind of magnetically drawn to that. You yeah. Know? A bit, a bit, but that's c- comedy contests. And, all of them. Oh, all and, of them. Absolutely. Across the board. Yeah. Um, so you do the contest. You, you, you don't make the semis, but you, you, you bounce back. You, uh, did you, were you there for the finals? Did you go watch? Yeah, I think I did because there was I had gone to like watch every finals for like a ton of years in a row. There, oh, interesting! Was, just as a fan of comedy. Yeah, yeah. So you were pretty familiar with like the kind of mechanics of the contest of sorts. Yeah, or not before, but starting with that Brooks. Oh, okay, yeah. And after I started coming every right. fall to watch the the finals. Yeah, I've seen I've I seen could. most of them since I since I started. Judged a bunch of them. Yeah, but we'll talk about judging in a minute too. Um, I mean, yeah, non Kindler yeah. talk. <laughs> um, did did you? So so you so you didn't you never considered doing the contest again. You weren't like I'm gonna hold out and see if I no because I got hired. I, then well, I you got were paid already hired because yeah. the rules were you couldn't be right. a paid comedian. But you, were were you in, in any capacity thinking about like if you hadn't got hired here, do you think you would have done it again, or were you already getting paid at other like spots? Ah, there wasn't a lot of spots to get paid when I started because it was literally Acme was the only club. That when was when I, knuckleheads had yeah, closed. Knuckleheads right? had just closed, so the Acme. And I was literally just hitting mics, but no, I didn't, I, I didn't, I mean, I got hired that March or when right. they tapped me on the shoulder. So I didn't even think about it coming up. Cause I had thought about it after I didn't win. I thought maybe I'll wait one more year. Cause I was like, how much money am I really going to make if I get, you know, at the time I was just an open mic or two, but then I was like, eh, I got a couple offers and I was like, never mind. I'm taking this money. I'm not yeah. doing the contest again next year. And, uh, and then, and also that. But it probably kept me and Nate from killing each other because Nate didn't do well my year. And, and let me tell you, when I talk to Nate, we're going to talk a lot about the year that Nate didn't do well. Um, but <laughs> then the next year he did quite well, but we didn't have to go against each other. Wow. Well, that's good. Yeah. So you... And then we just competed about every other thing for the rest of our lives since. But that one thing we did not compete on. But uh, you're still in it. So this hatred is keeping you both going because a lot of people <laughs> I started with are gone. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, tired. you gotta have you gotta have a uh, pace horse or whatever, you know. And they know just side eye each other and keep on going on. Um, so you got hired. So you got hired pretty fast. So that 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 takes the sting out of the contest for you. Record f- fast. Probably one of the fastest people <laughs> ever hired at this club. Lewis well, was like, I gotta lock this kid down. We'll Brilliant. Send, we'll send this clip to Andy Kindler just so. <laughs> no, it is funny because Andy. I, so I hosted for him, and then when I got bumped to feature, I think Andy was one of the first or second comics that I featured for. It might have been Eddie Gosling, but I love Andy. I just, oh, of course. No, of course. Everybody. I don't want this to be a real anti. This no, it's is much an funnier. anti- It's much funnier Kindler. than it's a good comic <laughs> that we like that gave you zero <laughs> scores than if it was like some jerk who doesn't do comedy anymore. Like It's much funnier. Yeah. Um, and then you, of course, wound up at one point. You were living in a, you were living in an apartment with uh, with Brooks and Eric Allen. So you were there was it was just contest winners ahoy. You were, yeah, you, it was you just were, contest winners, and then and, a and weird. You, but you already worked there, so you didn't matter. Weird guy that didn't make it to the semifinals. But then that was that that was that stretch though with Brooks and with Eric. There was a little stretch there where they did the winners did all get hired. Like I said, not in retrospect, correlation, not causation. Yeah, from like two thousand five up to like. 2009 or something. Yeah, right? and Everybody even like was... Rick Logan stopped coming around after because he got a bunch of theater work after he won, so he just wasn't around. And Andy got second, and, uh, and then oh, Andy yeah. got hired right after that. Yeah, Andy but Andy, I always consider like the top five. Somebody and that's really what, it, really... and that's what I always tell people, contestants. I was like, what you really want, first off, you just wanted the experience because the experience is good regardless. But if you make it in the top five, you get seen by the same number of people than if you win. And it, they really just getting seen and kind of being, you know, in the mix is that's as much as you can hope for. Yeah. I mean, other than the thousand dollars. Yeah. What would you have done with that thousand dollars back then? 
back then? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, probably paid off credit cards or bought something stupid. Okay, because now the answer is like mortgage. You know, we're, we're, both, <laughs> we're both adult. We're responsible yeah, just, adults now. Yeah. But back then, 1000 bucks was... Uh, yeah, that would be... Uh, go, I spent at the Green Mill on two dollar gin and tonics for totally the next and pizza year. slices. Yeah, because you know, because one of the oh, I'm going to interview Aiden McCluskey, one of the newer winners, who's a really nice kid. And uh, I remember the I talked to him the next day after he won his year, and he was like, he was like 19 or he's really young when he won, and he like rented a hotel room and like ate, ate some edibles and ordered pizza at like the W Hotel, like with his winning money or whatever. Like it was really funny. He basically did like Home Alone two, Lost in New York. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we was like, because I saw him the next day and he was like, oh man, I just ate pizza in a fancy hotel. It was so funny. I met a lady in the park. She had birds on her. And we <laughs> yeah, went on exactly. an adventure. Joe oh. Pesci and Daniel Stern inexplicably <laughs> returned. Acme's contest is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, yeah, so you got hired pretty fast. Uh, and then, of course, uh, after that, you've judged many a contest. Yeah. They, I, when, I, when I'd come down, they'd offer you to judge if you had. They kind of, like, sometimes Sarah would be like, look, I'm busy. You're going to judge. And oh, I'd be like, yeah. yes, Sarah, I will. I say, say yes to Sarah. That was the rule. Yeah. So then I did get to judge. I, I, get to, I got to found, find out the inner secrets of what, what the criteria was. Did you, um, did you, did you kind of keep your, your judging experience in mind when you judged? Were you trying to be like a, a generous judge? Or do you just do you just zero I people mean, out of the I mean, I always try to, if the person did the best, they would get the tens. Like, I wouldn't base it on, oh, I given them really low, they did better. Like, how mm-hmm. you talked about how Kindler might have uh, hurt me or something, but, or, I, I don't know why. I, I, I think that's that, a natural tendency. My point is, I think that's a natural tendency. In the finals, I would do that because I, especially I would do that in the finals because I wouldn't, they're all only going to be judged against each other, right? There's no broader thing. And so I would always want to, like, if the first person was really good, I'd want to, like, be a little, wait a second, see how the other people are so I can evaluate yeah. them accordingly. But, yeah, but if there was definitely, like, two that were really, one stood out, but one did really well, I would try to up, I mean, give them the appropriate numbers that they may have a chance to get into the semifinals, even if yeah. they didn't win their night or something. Yep. But but I don't know. I And I probably was an easier judge due to the trauma that I went sure, through. Sure, that's what I would figure. Yeah, you're just, uh, you're just, you're just like crying and circling tents <laughs> for everybody. Like everybody like having wins. acid flies. Oh, no. Kindler. Get their, get their Rolling Rock t-shirt out at least. <laughs> yeah. and then Brooks would walk in and I would cower and give him the judge sheet. Like, I shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> you didn't kneel before the winner. <laughs> yeah. Genuflect. Uh, Did, was anybody else, uh, Brooks and, other than Brooks and Amber, do you remember in your year? That like stuck around or that you would see around for a while. I don't. And you, we might not know. Like some, you know, like well, I mean, for instance, like Brandy Brown definitely probably did that year. Well, yeah, but so. she might not have made the semis that year or whatever because Brandy did a bunch of. I was just talking to her. Um, yeah, I can't several. remember who was in the top five. I'm assuming you have access to the finals for me. Yeah, I think I probably something. do. I probably could find that out. But I'm mean, gonna go back and check that out. Yeah, I couldn't. I just know Brooks won it, and I don't even know who was. There was like t- tar. I don't know. I'm gonna name names that could yeah. be wrong, and then yeah. Did Amber make the finals? Do we know? I don't know. I'll have to check. I'll check in on that. I'll look in. On that. I don't even know if she did it. Like I can't remember. I just know that we got. Yeah, I think she did. I think my ex girlfriend was also in it. There was a comedian, mm-hmm. Nicole Pamelia, that that did it, and she got further. She I got further than you that year. I think two girls I dated ended up getting further than me. <laughs> well, you're like the good luck Chuck of the funniest person. I had contest. to give him the inside. I was like, just make sure you don't have Kindler judging you. You're good to go. <laughs> Get that Kostaki week. He's a pushover. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's Greek. Easy. He just gives shit away. Do not bring a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what advice do you have uh, for kind of, I assume people ask you for advice, right? Yeah. What do you, when, when they ask you for advice, what do you tell them? About gen- comedy in general or the content? Both. Uh, I mean, I think they should have their set prepared for the contest. Know what you're doing. Don't wing it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, try it uh, at a couple mics before. And then, and if you're wishy-washy, make sure you can conf- you just commit to something and then, uh, and do your best. Don't go over your time and have fun. But, but uh, yeah, there's no, and then in comedy in general, I just say, just keep writing. That's what. To Chuck Bartell, get stage time and write, and then yeah. uh, and then everything will fall in place for you. 
Do you have you uh, you've done now? You also won a, a lot of other comedy contests. Um, so you you've vindicated yourself. You won uh, Guild of Laugh Fest, I believe. Correct. Yeah, I did win the Best of the Midwest. So uh, that's a big one. So this was Twin Cities. This would be a larger market that I won. <laughs> And the cat, <laughs> the cash prize was a little higher, so maybe <laughs> I took that one more seriously, or I just said, you know, maybe I feel like Lewis might have called him and be like, "Look, like, he's so <laughs> upset that he didn't win. You got to give him this one." So when I, we we both lost Great American, right? No, did that's you, the one you, I won. You won Great American? No, no, the Great American Comedy Festival. Oh no, yeah, Great American. I did not. I did not I win, that, win one either. that either. That was a fun one to not win, though. I enjoyed not winning that. Yeah, and now they don't even do a contest because I did that festival again, and then right, now exactly. They just pay you. Yeah. Do you? Uh, what's your thought on comedy? Do you like comedy contests? Do you? Uh, uh, I mean, nobody, I, mean I, yeah, I do. Well, I mean, my huge break was in a comedy contest for Last Comic Standing. That's when a good I made point. It to the semifinals, and they're great when you're doing well. It's like these are the best <laughs> things ever invented. Uh, but I mean, they're just part of it. You just get. Yeah. It's just like. No, they're not that fun. If, if if being like, yeah, I'm still a good comic, but I didn't win that. But it's, it, it's all, uh, whatever. It just it's like it's that day you weren't the you, best, yeah, right? Or in that knows? circumstance, you weren't the best. But it doesn't mean you're always going to be worse than those people, or that you might not yeah. be better than those people the next night. Yeah, I know? mean, they maybe they if people do a comedy contest, they should be like, well, if you didn't win, you have to quit, like <laughs> like a Highlander they, situation. Yeah, if they just put in more, you know, it might weed some people out. It would. You know, there'd be more opportunities for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I do think, and I, and that's one of the reasons I really like the funniest person contest is it's a, 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 I think because it's an amateur contest and because it, it the the criterion's more small. You can't have been paid. You have to be brand new, basically. Yeah. And so it, you know, it, it takes away that weird thing where like you do a comedy contest and you're like, this guy has been on Letterman seven <laughs> times, <laughs> and I've been doing comedy for four years, and we're competing for the same prize. Yep. I think the scope and the, the the closeness of the scope really helps. And the fact that it's three minutes every time, I think, because um, I, I had asked Lewis before, like, why, well, why don't you go to five? And he's like, well, then it's a different contest. If, like, being funny in five minutes and being funny in three minutes is different when you're new, hugely different. Right. He's like, we're not looking for the closest person to a professional. We're looking for the funniest amateur. Yeah. And then- you can try to be professional after that, which I think is a good. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I think it makes sense. I think it's good. Uh, it's the it's I think it's the, the comedy contest that's as close. To, I would say it's about as close to fair as a contest can get because everything ultimately art is subjective. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah, unless you get killed. But even like, you know, like in, in, in any given night, you know, it's like a, or a, even in a football game, like, you know, maybe the Bengals don't win that game against the Chiefs three out of four other times. But last yep. Sunday they did. Exactly. You know, I just dated this interview very specifically. Great. But uh, go, Brandon. Let's uh, let's put this in post. I was like, "Congratulations, Bengals in the Super Bowl!" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, the Bengals lost the Super Bowl, and I look like a genius. We'll just splice the right one in." Um, but yeah, I think that is. I think that is the thing. I think you have you have a really good attitude about comedy contests, which is like it can it, it is a like you can complain about them. You can be like they're never fair. I never win, you know. And that's what I say because I never win. But um, they are a part of comedy, and but don't like. Take don't you know we we were talking last night and we won't mention names but we we both know people who behaved pretty badly at a big contest when they didn't win yeah and uh, and it was really kind of pathetic honestly like I, I I was just like dude I also didn't win and guess who's not being a huge baby you know like it's so weird that people I mean I guess we're comics we're all weird yeah but. <laughs> I mean everybody handles loss in their own way but <laughs> yeah but yeah and a lot of these contests. I mean, even Acme's, you get to, it's about getting seen by people. You get to meet the headliner that night. That's yes. like, there's, there's all these things more than just the contest. That's just kind of exciting about it. And, and, uh, and you'll do that at, at, throughout your career. And then if it's not even a contest, it's trying to get into a festival or, or you're always gearing up for some type of showcase that's three to five right. to seven minutes long that you're going to be in a list of comics and you go and then some, you get something and then you don't. <laughs> yeah, and, and I always tell people all of comedy is kind of a contest in the sense that, well, we would all like to be on a late night spot. We would all like to have the Comedy Central have all these things. We're all trying to get those things to yeah. some degree. So it's like you, you can't you can't like just totally shirk the contest element of comedy. You, no. you like you're deluding yourself. And if you're thinking that there's not that. 
to yeah. some degree. It's just one, of, and then this is a great introduction to that of like, okay, yep. this is how I make a tight three minutes, and then all of a sudden a TV face will be like, we I have a four yeah. minute set, and you're like, ah, the contest only gave me three minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If only Lewis changed this, this could be the <laughs> could be the late night set contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always tell people to actually sign up for more contests than they think they want to, or like if you if you can do one that doesn't cost a lot of money, but you can join into it. Like if you're like, I don't like doing contests, I say do it. Put yourself in a position to have more high pressure sets early in your career because you'll just gain experience like all high pressure sets. You learn a little bit about yourself and you eventually I think that's why older comics do better in festivals. It's not even just that we have like more um, experience in comedy. Like I know when I used to do what I would do a festival set, I would just be a ball of nerves. Yeah. And now I'm like, look, I'm probably not going to win this, yeah. but I'm going to go have fun <laughs> and I'm going to go try to impress my friends and be funny. And if I win, that's cool, which is a way easier attitude to do well with than the like, oh, if I do everything just right, it'll definitely work out for it, me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what you, you, that's one of the main things. Yeah. But you're right though. I, the value really, the I think a big part of the value of doing the contest or well, for me, I mean, at the time. You know, it's when you're new, it's hard to get stage time at Acme at the mic because there's so many people signing up. So you go, wait, I'm going to guaranteed get up on a Monday pretty mm-hmm. much because I'm, it's my practice round. Right. And I'm going to get to do a show where there's like a show, like a headliner. Like you're going to get to do, a, you're going to get to go on stage at a paid show at one of the best clubs in the country, like for, for free because you signed your name on a piece of paper. Like yeah. that's worth it right there just to get to do. And your contest. friends and family get to come because you get yeah. the, the comps because normally they'd be like, hey, can I come to your show? And I, when you're coming to the Acme Open, like, you don't always know if you're going to get up. So I'm like, you could come, but I might not get up. Yeah. Or I'd have to like text my sister like, I didn't get on this time. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, a, it's one of the, so, when, when you're new, it's, it's the only time that you yeah. can say like, you, if you come to this club, I will be on stage and it's, I know it's going to be a good club and I know it's going to be a good show. Yeah. And, it, and you know. they can all watch you succeed or- you can watch one of your other contestants fail in front of all their friends and family. Yeah. So it's kind of a bonus for everybody. I always enjoy when someone brings a lot of people and then the people they bring don't laugh at them. Like, that happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> or or they all of a sudden really like somebody else. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I hope they still laugh at their friend, but it is fun when they if there's somebody that did a little bit better or, or uh-huh. is sitting out there, they'll go be like, oh. And then they have to have that weird conversation like well that other guy was was gal was she was great you should you should get her name (laughs) that's totally true have you have you uh had any weird run-ins with contestants have you ever had a strange experience when hosting or doing? oh yeah see and that's the best part so (laughs) everybody's jumping nobody's like oh 19 of them everybody brandy brown's like i got nine stories you've never heard so so when you get hired then you you start you know, emceeing, so you get to meet a lot of the contestants. Is, you you is run the, the contest kind of for the week, or you host yeah. it, yeah. And that and that was a blast. The the biggest one that comes to me, like my mind when I think about when I was hosting, uh, was a guy that set up a whole table with like table settings, and it, I don't know if he was doing his one man show <laughs> or what he was doing. <laughs> And for some reason, there's a rule where your three minutes doesn't start until you talk into the mic. Yes, so that's right. Set up all he had, he had his tech crew or whatever, which was <laughs> so he set it up, and I, I was like, whatever. I couldn't remember the guy's name. Uh, he d- did his whatever that was, and then it was awkward. And then then he had tear down. So then I'm coming back out like keep it going for this guy, and he slowly starts taking his <laughs> props down. And then eventually it was just me just chucking stuff into the back. Like, all right, buddy, this isn't your night. This isn't my night. But we do need to get a headliner up here eventually, and it's still a feature. So, so. Uh, do you remember what his bit was with the table setting? No, at all? I swear he was. I don't know because I'm in the back too, right. so I couldn't really hear. But I, I think he was doing like a bit about being a server or something. But it was just bizarre. I was like, wow. who allowed this? Where is the- <laughs> People can't play guitar or come in, but I, that's what's nice about, you know, it's amateur. This guy had never been paid to do comedy, yeah. and that's all that <laughs> he could bring all the props he wanted. A friend of ours whose name I won't mention because he's a friend of ours, but who I will definitely narc on the second the microphone is off, uh, <laughs> shared with me very sheepishly that his first time in comedy at a comedy contest in a different state, because uh, we were talking about the ridiculous stuff that you see people do, yeah. that he stuffed a large potato in his pants and his closer was removing the large potato from his pants and throwing it into the audience like a baseball. <laughs> and this is a 
long-standing professional comedian. <laughs> wow. That you know very well. Wow. I am really excited to find out who He's going to listen is. to this episode, and he's going to be so nervous that I'm going to say his name. <laughs> what did he do with the money he won from the contest? <laughs> He bought more potatoes. <laughs> yes. That was the best part. Yes. It's just perfect. It's all circular. He's, you know, <laughs> now he sells those potatoes for twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> that makes that makes sense. That table setting thing is something else. Have you ever had a bad run in with a? I mean, I guess that counts as a bad run in. Yeah, that was just like the toughest. But <laughs> uh, there's there was people that got their mics cut. Sure. But a lot of people, it's I. It was nice too because they come in, they're super nervous. They're sitting in the green room, and I. It was fun to be able to make them comfortable or be like, hey, guys, like, this is a cool opportunity. Just have fun out there. Like, that's when I first started, there was an MC, Ryan Hunter. I think so. He might have been hosting when I did the contest. But I just remember him being like, oh, it's cool that you're doing this. Like, have fun. You know, it's this is a cool thing, but it's not the end of the world, no matter yeah. what happens. So get, getting people comfortable. Is is fun or freaking them out if I was in a bad mood? Like sure. you guys. <laughs> oh, you first guys. off, get out of the screen room. <laughs> Go sit at the table outside. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it's probably one of the only times that I'm nice. I don't generally have that <laughs> setting, but I do feel obligated to be nice to the contestants because I remember it's they're so nervous. I was so nervous, and I'm like, I should probably. I don't like try to freak them out usually. Yeah, you know, unless they're like real jerky about it. I used to. I used to try to be nice. Yeah, no, they're all <laughs> they're all excited. A lot of them have been playing, you know, thought about it, and so. And then sometimes you'll see them, you know, like I said, uh, there's there's always a few people that come out of the contest. Doesn't mean they win it. Doesn't mean yeah. they're even in the semis. But you, it's like, oh man, I saw this. I saw this girl in the finals, and then two years later, she's getting getting work all around town. Yeah, and then I have fans that did. They're like, when I do my show here, we'll come and be like, I was in the contest when you were hosting once. They're like, so yeah, so, yeah, though. exactly. Because I, I I like that part of hosting is that you do. I I always enjoy working a week of the contest and no, yeah, but I also enjoy fun. it from like because the managers have to do all the hard work <laughs> and I just mostly get to watch, you know. Yeah. Also, I always enjoy hosting, like especially when I was hosting, uh, which I only did for a year because I got promoted before Nate Abshire. But um, when I was when I was hosting, um. You know, the first week of the contest, you're like, ah, oh, sweet, it's the contest. We're going to have so much fun. And by August, when you, you hosted like four weeks of the contest and you've put up with all the contestants, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, the finals are almost here. We can just host regular shows starting yeah. in October. Yeah, yeah. Because for the host, it's a lot more work. Whereas like the feature and the headliner, it's like, whatever, it's just fun. But yeah, I know you're bringing every Comic Con. You're taking them down their sets. If they kind brought... of wrangling them a little bit. Yeah. You kind of have to wrangle because sometimes they get a little drunk and wandery and. I had a a, yeah, yeah. a very good friend of mine who does comedy very well now. Uh, was super drunk his night, and I was trying to like I didn't know him at the time, and I was just like managing this super drunk kid <laughs> backstage, trying to like pour him on and off stage. And, and now he's very successful. Just potatoes falling. Just out of his potatoes pants. falling out just of his like, pants. What's happening? Like you do. Yeah. You know what? We should have had the potato guy and the table setting guy. They could have done a whole food thing. You know that a. It could have been, they could have won. I just feel like if you're going to have props, you need to be put in a prop category. There needs to be prop night. Not just, and guitar night? Yeah. yeah. If Lewis would let me reorganize a little bit <laughs> so people and in, in their different levels of types of comedy. You know, I don't think a guitar person, in all the years I've been here, a guitar person's never won. But it was, I mean, Mary Mack, did she perform music in hers? That's a good question. I don't Mandolin think she did, song? but she might have. That's interesting. She might have done a song. I'll have to ask her about that. Did she win it though? That no, year? she uh, Which, she got third. Okay, but she did make it to the yeah, top. Yeah, she made it to the finals. Tim Harmston won that year. Yeah, she met her husband too. That because was, uh, Tim that was told the real prize. A, a story that <laughs> the story that Tim told told, and I'm sure we'll we'll talk about it when they're there. Is that he uh, after the night after the contest, he said to her, "I think thinking he was being very romantic. Uh, I think you should have got second. <laughs> 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 you were really good. You should have got second. I love that. Even when you're hitting on a on, on a beautiful, talented girl out of your league, you're like, I mean, I'm still the funniest, but like, you're lovely, and I would love to date you. <laughs> you know, he's like, wow. he's so good. he couldn't just say you're the best. Yeah, <laughs> it's so <he's>... funny. <laughs> good job, Tim. <laughs> and it all worked out for them. How to woo a lady and. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Any 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 general comedy advice for people before we head out? Any new comics watching? Other than, uh, other than the Bartell advice? Is it just, besides just keep writing? Oh, man, I don't know. That's the only thing I've ever been told for yeah, the last 15 years. It's, and it's gotten us exactly this far, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, but, yeah, no, just uh, do it. Do it. If you love it or are interested in it all, do, go for it. You have yeah. nothing to lose. Yeah, and it, it, and it everything gets everything to gain. One thousand dollars, <laughs> life changing. <laughs> and it does get so much less scary. Uh, I, I, I mean, even after the first like fifteen times you do it, you're like, oh, okay, 
Yeah. I think I can do this. I think the first 14 times I blacked out, but the 15th <laughs> time I was like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm focused now. No. Great. Well, thanks for uh, coming down here to do this. And uh, thanks uh, for having let's, me. Let's go. Let's go judge the hell out of the finals this year. We haven't I'm judged e- in a while. I'm excited to see this this new contest. How it's going to go out. I'm how excited. It's play. All right. Well, thanks very much, Tommy, and uh, we'll see you here uh, at Hackmate real soon. Okay. <laughs>